I'm talking about organizing your workbench to be more efficient on Ron's trains and things right now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Few things are more frustrating than to be working on a project and to have a tool or a piece of material or a detail part that you know you have, but you just can't find. This comes back to the issue of organization of our workbench, our tools, and our materials. Now this type of organization is something that many of us struggle with, myself included. I have to work really hard to make sure that I keep my projects, my t materials, and tools in an organized and neat fashion in order to be able to work more efficiently. Well today I'm going to share with you some tips that I have found that really help me keep my workbench and my projects organized, and I hope they'll be helpful to you. So let's go over to my workbench and I'll share some of these tips with you. We're over at my workbench where I want to show you a few of my favorite organi organizational tips. And the first one I'm going to show you is not unique to me. I picked it up somewhere along the line. I know several people who use it, uh, but it is a, a great help for organizing. And that is this accordion folder. Um, it's a file folder that uh, you can use maybe for you know bills or organizing papers. Uh, and I use it for organizing my styrene stock, my sheet stock. Um, literally, I just go through and I put one type or size of styrene in, in each one of these pockets. And I keep the package in there so I know exactly what is in that. And then whenever I use a piece and have a, a, a piece left over, I can put it back in the same pocket and I know exactly what that piece is. And if I need another piece like it, I know exactly where to find it. Also, by keeping the packages here, I can tell whenever I'm running out of something, when I need to uh, buy some more of a particular type of stock to have it on hand. And you see here I have just very th various thicknesses and, and styles of uh, styrene stock here. Uh, 40 thousandths plain styrene is something I use in large quantities, so I buy it in large pieces. But I, when I have a piece that I am working with, it's down to the size to keep in here. I put in here, I have some scraps of plexiglass here. Back here in the back, I have a few different kinds of uh, brick sheet. And that's just a great way to help keep your styrene organized. A, a second thing that I really, really love for helping keep tools organized, and that is this rotating caddy. Uh, I bought this caddy from Micromark. By the way, I want to say right off the bat that uh, I am not a Micromark affiliate. And Micromark in no way is sponsoring this video. I'm not receiving anything from them. Uh, but I am showing you a couple of products from Micromark that I just really, really like. And this is one of them. Uh, used to be I had problems with keeping tools organized. I just I would have them spread out everywhere and lay them down and try to keep them in boxes. I could never find anything. This caddy was a lifesaver. Uh, literally, you've got like four tiers of little holes to keep small tools in, as well as some trays here in the bottom. And you can see I've got everything from my hobby knives to uh, tweezers to uh, pin vices and drills, scissors up here on the top. I have a variety of uh, needle nose pliers and side cutters, just a little bit of everything in there. I also have another rotating caddy, uh, similarly, that I use for paint. And this I actually keep back behind me on a shelf. Uh, but these were really designed with uh, uh, poly scale uh, paints in mind because they're perfect for those size bottles. Uh, as uh, I'm running out of my poly scale paint. You can see some paints fit in there better than others. The Tamiya jars don't fit in there very well, but it's still very helpful to keep organized. I kind of organize this by color, and I can always find what I'm looking for, and I know whenever I'm running short of something. Uh, a third thing, and, and maybe one of my very favorite organizational tools, are these little tackle boxes. These are little miniature tackle boxes. You can pick these up at any uh, outdoor uh, sporting goods store or even at Walmart. And these are great because they have lots of little compartments in them and you can store small items and keep them organized and they know exactly where they are and what you have. Uh, this one here is one that I keep at my workbench all the time. And you can see I've got in here, I've got push pins, I've got T pins, uh, toothpicks that I use for applicators and various things, cotton swabs, 
uh, four different sizes of micro brushes. I've always got them at hand. Uh, this pocket has uh, little miniature uh, clothes pins that I turn around and turn into various kinds of clamps. These are, are very, very handy. And uh, then I keep these last three small compartments empty because when I'm working on rolling stock, when I take it apart, it's a great place to store parts while you're working. I can put my wheel sets, my trucks, any other bolster pins, any other small parts in there. can keep them close at hand, know exactly where they are. Uh, I actually have three or four of these that I use for different things. Here's another one that I want to show you. Uh, if you uh, are upgrading your wheels to metal wheel sets, uh, I do that as I go, and I don't like to have to order metal wheel sets when I want them. Try to keep them on hand. And so this is a tackle box that is just full of wheel sets. And uh, you can see here, uh, I keep the, the little labels from the wheel set packages and stick them right in the compartment with the wheel sets themselves so I know exactly what size wheels, what length of axles I have and uh, keep them in here and keep them organized. They're always at hand. I'm ready whenever I want to upgrade some wheels. This is a two-sided tackle box. So on the other side, I have some more packages of certain wheel sets. I have these on the other side, but these are some, some more to refill those if I need. I also have uh, um, replacement trucks and uh, body-mounted couplers uh, that I keep on the other side here so that uh, whenever I am upgrading my rolling stock, that is always at hand. I also have a couple more of those boxes, one that I use for soldering materials and track laying items that I keep things like my solder, my flux, my rail joiners, all those small pieces in, and I just carry it out to the workbench whenever I'm working. And I have one that I keep full of detail parts, things like uh, Grantline windows and doors that I use a lot, and I can always know exactly where they are and have them separated by, by type. I have one more organizational tool that I want to show you, but for that one, we're going to have to go out to the train room, so let's go there and I'll show it to you now. Another thing that I have found to be a great help to me in keeping organized is this set of drawers that I bought from Walmart several years ago. Now, this is literally just 10 shallow drawers in a metal frame. It's on small casters, and I bought this for less than $20. And what this does is this allows me to keep organized with some of my modeling projects. Uh, literally, I can put one project in each one of these drawers, and I can keep everything from parts and kits for a project to reference photos and notes that I keep, detail parts. If there's specific paint I want to use, I can keep the paint jar right in there. Uh, all kinds of things that I need to keep organized for uh, those projects. And I just literally put one in each drawer. For example, this top drawer, uh, those of you who remember my Holt Hotel build uh, several weeks back, these are some parts that I had left over from some of those Hilltown Hotel kits by DPM that I used to kit bash the Holt Hotel. There's also a couple full kits of Hilltown, Hilltown Hotels in here. Because I have another structure on my layout that I'm going to build down the road that's going to use uh, Hilltown Hotel parts, and so I'm going to uh, keep all these in here for whenever I build that, uh, that other structure. The second drawer actually has a locomotive that I've been working on super detailing. And I don't know if you can see inside of the box there, you can see the locomotive in, in pieces here as uh, I've been uh, custom painting and detailing this locomotive. That will be the subject of another video down the road on Ron's Trains and Things. Uh, but you see I've got a file folder in here with lots of reference photos uh, for that project, notes that I have kept, and, and all kinds of detailed parts and such. The third one has uh, several pieces of rolling stock that I've been working on upgrading and also weathering and uh, making some loads for. And so I have those in there in a project. And I can literally organize 10 different projects in, uh, in this one piece of furniture. And it, it wheels around so I can wheel it right over to my workbench whenever I want to be able to access several of them. Or I can just pull a drawer completely out, carry the drawer over to my workbench while I'm working. And when I'm done, I can just stick it back in here. Everything is kept neat together and out of the way. And that really relieves a lot of the frustration of losing parts or not knowing where I've laid a tool or a particular bottle of paint or setting aside a reference photo that I can't find. Uh, this has been a great help to me and uh, I highly recommend something like this to help organize your projects. 
One final organizational tip that I want to share with you has to do with keeping paperwork. Now this may seem obvious, but uh, I know many model railroaders who don't do this but should. Uh, and that is, I keep a whole series of large binders with various kinds of paperwork that I need to hold on to. Um, this particular binder I have here deals with operations and with DCC on my layout. And it is a large three inch binder. And this is just one of several binders that I keep around. And in this I have uh, some section dividers and I just have various information that I have collected over time. Uh, I have some arc articles from the uh, NMRA Operations Special Interest Group as well as from some other places on, uh, on operations, on designing for operations, um, also on uh, things like yard design and uh, I have a section here on operation, operational rules uh, where I have my own timetable that I have written for my own layout uh, just to kind of help keep uh, my operators organized so they kind of know how things work here. Um, I have information back here on general operations and, and operational rules and ideas. And then I also keep information back here about uh, my DCC system and uh, DCC decoders. DCC programming and uh, programming CVs on decoders is not something that uh, is a specialty of mine, so I have to keep a lot of notes about it. So I have a section here on general DCC programming, and then uh, I have a section here on uh, from Digitracks which is their decoder manual that you can download online. I use a lot of Digitrax decoders and so I found it helpful just to go and download their entire manual. And it's a large manual. It's like 60 pages I think. Uh, looks like about 55 pages. And I just printed the entire thing, put it in this three ring binder, then if I ever have any questions about uh, decoders, about uh, where the CVs are or how I need to program them, I've got that information right here. I keep the manuals from all my specific decoders as well and whenever I install a decoder I keep that manual, I write <clears throat> the reporting marks of the locomotive that I installed it in right on it and uh, I also keep a chart uh, in an Excel program that uh, tells me exactly which locomotives have which decoders, what their uh, numbers, uh, road numbers are programmed as, and uh, all how all the CVs are programmed so that if I ever have a problem with a decoder I can go right to that chart and see exactly uh, how I originally programmed that in case I need to to redo that. I also in this and other binders keep uh, old you know magazine articles. If I read an article in uh, a, a hobby magazine that I think is really helpful uh, I'll just photocopy that thing and stick it in a binder uh, where it'll help me. I don't have to go dig back through old issues. Uh, I do the same with the online discussions. If I have one in particular that is helpful to me I'll just print that out and put it in a binder. So a binder like this this can be very, very helpful. And again, I keep several of them. I keep one for my Ron's Trains and Things videos, uh, so where I can keep notes about plans for, for future videos, and uh, also kind of keep a, a schedule. And those things really, really help me. So uh, this is a, an organizational tip that, uh, again, might seem pretty obvious, but many, many people don't do, but it would be a huge help to you just to keep your paperwork together in a binder, organized, label it by some tabs. That way, whenever you do need a piece of information, you can always find it. Well, I hope some of these tips will help some of you to be able to get organized and be more efficient at your workbench. Do you have some other tips that would be helpful to model railroaders in order to keep their materials and tools organized? If so, share them with us down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, here's a link to some more videos I know you'll enjoy as well. I also hope that you'll give it a thumbs up down below. Be sure and subscribe and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. And share this video wherever model railroaders hang out. Be sure and check out the description down below where you'll find a link to my Amazon page, my Patreon page where you can learn about the rewards for those who invest in Ron's Trains and Things, as well as ways that you can connect with me on various social media. I hope you'll take a minute to check that out. Well, join me again next Tuesday as I'll be bringing you another great model railroad segment, and I look forward to seeing you then. Ten, Lizzie?